Porsche take one, Mark? Mm -hmm. uh, so, my boyfriend and I, we had a pretty decent relationship. Um, we met each other online because we both did cosplay. Um, and in our relationship, we did cosplay together. It was really fun. Um, but we, I, I guess, <laughs> decided to call it off because when it just came down to it, we weren't very compatible um, as people. When I did finally decide to break it off, I knew that it was very important that we establish how we were going to disengage from social media, like our social media presence, because our livelihood was so connected to it and our reputations were so connected to our relationship that I wanted to establish how we separated. Um, but he didn't want to establish that. So once we did finally get off the phone, it was kind of left in the air of how we would go about our, the, our separation online, which made it very confusing. Um, so on my end, I guess that meant that we would just go about it any way that we saw fit. After, uh, yeah, so I called him and that's where we had the breakup conversation. Um, and, and you were afraid that this was going to. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I had the conversation and I was afraid that, that if we didn't establish how we were going to, um, you know, tell our parents, tell the world of social media, um, how that, you know, we were broken up, but it, it didn't mean anything negative about each other. I, I was afraid that if we didn't establish that or if we didn't have like a route for it, that basically what would have happened would have happened. <laughs> And it did, I mean, it happened. Uh, I didn't think it would be that bad, but um, my fears came to light because he didn't want to establish uh, a series of actions, I guess. So um, because we were making our money online, I had the opportunity to be on a big dating show it's some, it, we always wanted to be into TV and that's why I moved to LA. We wanted to be in entertainment and things like that. So we knew that that was like a great next step. So I had the opportunity to do that, but I had to do um, a video. In the video, I talked about our relationship for like 45 seconds. Like I, I made it like a joke about it. I had to put it on my YouTube, but I told him about it beforehand. I said, you know, this, is, this video's up. It's a big opportunity for me. I want you to know that I'm making jokes in the video, but I respect our relationship. I told him that he said, I saw the video and I'm okay with it, but, um, and I hope that you get it. And then 10 minutes later, he tells me that he's really disrespected by it. And he, he starts calling me names and saying that I was petty and disrespectful. And then I just stopped talking to him. Um, I told him that I was sorry and then I stopped talking to him. <laughs> um, but right after that, he blocked me. I'd never been blocked before, so I didn't even know that that's what had <laughs> happened. Uh, so he blocked me and he, on his Facebook, he wrote like three paragraphs scathing about my character, saying that I used him and he'd never been so disrespected and that... I don't even remember because it was so many paragraphs. Um, but the worst part wasn't just that he'd said all these things and that he had all of these followers so that he had the, he had the visibility to say all these things. It was all of the comments. There were like 30, 40, 50 comments at the time that I saw it. And I'm sure that there were more afterwards of people saying, oh yeah, I knew that she was doing this. And, I, I knew it was a matter of time and him saying, yeah, people tried to tell me. And I was like, who are, who, who are these people? I don't know who you are and you think all these horrible things about me. So that was the first thing that happened. The second thing is that he starts trying to 
message me to um, on my phone, trying to engage me once again, to s saying he can't believe that I sold out our relationship to for fame or something. I'm confused because the YouTube video only got 15 views. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> and so then I blocked him from there because I just didn't want to deal with any more of the negativity. It was making me sick. And I, you know, it made me start to feel like, wait, did I do that on purpose? Did, do I deserve to have these things be said about me? Um, you know, it just started to create a lot of doubt. Um, and when I tried to um, move past it, you know, I talked to my friends and family and they were like, no, you didn't do anything on, on purpose and you told him beforehand and he said it was okay. So I tried to, you know, move past it in the next couple of days. And then I started getting comments on my YouTube channel of people, you know, assuming that they know, knew what happened in the relationship and saying that karma was going to get me and all this other stuff. So I felt like my YouTube wasn't safe. And then people would tag me in things saying like, this girl is so sad. Like she just wants fame, everything. Like, so I would just be afraid of no notifications. Anytime I got a notification, it could be someone praising me for the work that I did, or it could be someone saying that, how could you use this person and you just make me sick. And I, in all of that, I didn't respond to any of these. I didn't respond to my ex-boyfriend. I just decided to keep moving forward because that's what I felt was the best, um, the best way out of it or through it. But then I realized that I wasn't getting as much exposure as I usually did on my Instagram, which is the main place where people see me and decide if they want to work with me or not. I usually got about 400, 300, 400 likes per picture, which increases your visibility um, so that people can reach out to you and see you. But at that time, I was barely getting 100 likes. Like, that's pretty bad. That's like taking my page back to when I first started it. Um, so it was decreasing my visibility. And then I noticed I wasn't getting shared on the cosplay pages like I usually do, which boosts my visibility. And that's when I was like, something is a little fishy here. Something is, is not adding up. Um, and my fear, my gut feeling was that he was blackballing me. And my fears were brought to light when someone who was a, um, he was the admin, so he's the head person of a big cosplay sharing page. He messaged me and said, I just wanted you to know that this is happening. So he screenshots me a direct message from my boyfriend out of the blue telling this man that he shouldn't support me, that I was a user of the community, that I used him in our relationship to get views um, and that he, that it is disrespectful to the cosplay community for him to share um, my images online. And thankfully, thankfully the admin said, well, I share amazing cosplay, she does amazing cosplay, whatever happened in your relationship is between the two of you and it's just a bad reflection on you and not on her. Thankfully he said that, but how many people, how many pages, how many admins did he go through before he was finally stopped in his tracks? Um, and that was, <laughs> that was just the craziest thing for me because I just couldn't believe that someone would purposefully try to destroy my career. I can understand you wanting to possibly, I guess, warn people that, hey, maybe she is not in the cosplay community for the right reasons. I can understand that, but to to take one one moment where I unintentionally hurt you and I apologize for it, but you continue to bash me, to take that moment and then to decide to purposefully try to destroy someone, that's really malicious to me, and I just couldn't believe that someone would be capable of that. And somebody you knew. 
Right. And someone that I knew, someone that I trusted, someone who was in my space. And I thought at one time that we were going to um, be together for the long haul. I feel like the, I can't exactly say how they saw me. I can only go off of what I experienced, which was that they didn't share my posts anymore. They didn't have me up on their sites and they didn't contact me to ask, hey, what's up with this? Who is, what, why is this guy saying these things about you? Um, they just decided to take his word at face value. So that's the only thing that I can go off of, which leads me to believe that they believed what he was saying. They believed that I was a user of the cosplay community, that I got into a relationship with him to boost my numbers on Instagram, like when you think about it, it's like, what does that mean? Like, I have to be with you, I have to love you outside of Instagram. Instagram is pictures, is numbers, is people's comments from strangers. But I'm the one who is with you at night when all technology is turned off. That yeah. doesn't make any sense to me. But um, yeah, when it comes to, you know, these influencers, what matters to them is the numbers. They don't know me personally. They aren't my friends. They aren't invested in my emotional well-being or even about my side. He had about 10 times more followers than I did. And therefore, they, they want to continue a relationship with him because he boosts them up, they boost him up. It's mutual. Who, who am I? You know, some person with five, 6,000 followers versus 60,000. I'm not helping them anyway. So it was more beneficial to them to believe him in the first place. Yeah, I definitely think that when, some, when, um, when a situation happens in real life or online, um, the first person who says something gets the upper hand on, the, um, on telling their side of the story. And for me, because I never, I never chose to even tell my side of the story because I knew that it would be twisted because this person had already established their side. Um, I, it, would, it'd be, it was even harder because I could never tell my side of the story because firstly, it would just continue to feed into this drama, which I knew that he wanted. Um, so, yeah, it was hard because even, even psychologically speaking, the first, the first story that we hear is the one that we keep the most in our mind and the one that we are, it's harder to um, change someone's mind. So once we hear a story once from a certain perspective, it's really hard to then change your bias um, towards the other person. So for everyone who heard what he said in some capacity or another, maybe through his direct mouth or a friend of a friend. I am a real person on the other side of it, on the other side of your keyboard. Um, I did love him. We did have a relationship and I'm not a user. Um, people's feelings were hurt and those feelings were real and it, really hurt my feelings and my business and my livelihood um, for those things to be said about me. And I think that it's really important that when you hear something said about anyone, that you have to think, what is that person's truth? What's their life? Because there are so many sides to the story and you can't just assume that you know everything about that person because you aren't living in their experience. And people weren't living in our experience. They didn't know what truly happened. And all I wanted was for someone to ask me, how are you feeling? What actually happened here? That's all you can really do. How is your business now? How's my business now? Uh, <laughs> well, it's really interesting because his sole, his sole um, purpose was to cripple my image, to destroy me online. 
And I think that it's really funny <laughs> because he wanted it so that I would never be in cosplay again. But I actually had the pleasure of representing cosplayers in the New York Times. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did you pull um, this off? Huh? How did you pull this off? Um, well, just through the positive relationships that I had fostered with the people around me, um, I continued doing cosplay, even though I knew that there would be the occasional person saying negative things about me, but I loved cosplay so much, and it, it, it's the main reason why I moved to LA in the first place. I loved a TV show, and so I started, um, I started dressing up like the character, and it got me back into my love of art, because I have an art degree. I have an art degree, but I'd stopped doing art. And so this got me back into art. It really like saved my life, because I was spiraling. Um, into just complacency um, and anxiety and it got me out of it so I loved it so much that negative words from people weren't going to stop me um, and because I continued doing it and continued trying to have a positive message and to uplift people um, other people saw that and so when they were contacted from the New York Times three people gave me um, gave that person my name and uh, I mean, it was, it was very surreal. It was, um, it was a Black Panther cosplay at the time that Black Panther was, um, was premiering. So, I mean, you know how big Black Panther was. So it was amazing to not only be able to represent cosplayers, but also to be a part of such a huge global phenomenon to begin with. So it was just such a blessing and um, just really ironic. 